Hey, Sea Wolves fans, it's time for the William T. Spader Series Update. I'm Greg Gagne alongside my broadcast partner, Matt Sabatis. And Matt, we're three games into this series, a pivotal series for the Sea Wolves against the Akron Rubber Ducks, Double A Indians, and the first place team in the Southwest Division. Erie looked okay on the first night. They broke out the bats on the second night, and then yesterday, Bases loaded in the first inning, and they just could not get any offense going from that point. Yeah, they had a lot of hits, seven hits, but all of them were singles. And on the contrast, Akron, their first five hits were all solo home runs. So you, you see what went wrong in that contest pretty quickly when you break down the box score. So while Erie had it, they couldn't get that situational hit. You mentioned the bases loaded in the first inning, and they stranded all three aboard. They had the hits from the guys that you want to see getting hits, Riley Green, Spencer Torkelson, and Dylan Dingler. But... Again, it just wasn't the key hit, so hopefully they can get it going again over the final three of this series, but they're going up against a, a tough trio of pitchers that have really hit them hard this year, especially Juan Hillman, one of the best in the league. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see the dynamic because I was talking with Arnie Baylor the past couple of days, and he was saying now it almost is like the Seawolves are matching up better against left-handed pitching than they are against right-handed pitching, and that's what Erie's going to see over the next couple of days with the Rubber Ducks. They're predominantly left-handed, heavy in their starting rotation right now. And I think that that really could play into Erie's favor. Now, it didn't work out last night with Tanner Tully, although he's more of a junk baller than your prototypical flame throwing that we're going to see out of Juan Hill. Yeah, Tanner Tully wasn't really much of a, a quick pace, pound it into the zone and strike it out kind of guy. He worked a lot of contact, evident by the seven singles he gave <laughs> up. It, there was just a lot of good movement on his pitches that Erie had a tough time actually getting barrel on and hitting deep for extra base hits. So the fact is, is that going up against a, a high quality strike thrower like Juan Hillman, it could spell good things for Erie coming up in the next three days. There's still a lot of positives to be taken from this series and Erie still only needs to pick up one more win to win the season series overall with Akron, which is obviously a, a big goal for the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, right now Erie on the outside looking into the playoff picture, but series wins do matter because if you can find a way to get yourself into a tie with one of these teams that's ahead of you, in the standings, that's going to put you into that playoff spot as opposed to being on the outside looking in when it comes time for the playoffs. You're absolutely right. And then when we look at the upcoming three games for Erie, Chance Kirby is going to start today for the Seawolves, and he's been pitching well. He's been one of the more efficient guys for the Seawolves going deep into contests. He picked up three quick wins to start his double-A career, and now he's trying to match A.J. Ladwig for the team high, maybe make his fourth season win with Erie. It's going to be a tough one with that lefty heavy lineup that Akron's been bringing to the table, but I can see good things coming out of this one. And it'll be interesting to see also trade deadline coming up and who knows? We've seen strange things happen in the minor leagues with trade deadlines. And you never know. There might be a guy moving from one clubhouse to another. Doubtful there would be a trade in the, oh, in the AL Central, way. but it, it's still a possibility with uh, with trades coming up that these all these teams of rosters could be impacted greatly in the Northeast League. Well, already for the Cleveland Indians, they've already had to make a couple of moves in regards to trades that have happened. Cesar Hernandez getting shipped to the White Sox because of that, a couple of holes filled up at the AAA level, and Akron is uh, about to start seeing some ripples on that one. Sure. There's been a little bit of up and down on where Richie Palacios <laughs> is actually going to be. He was supposed to be in the lineup yesterday, then wasn't in the lineup, then was in the lineup again. And we're still not sure about where he's I think going. everybody on the Erie pitching staff would be happy if Richie Palacios was not in UPMC Park the next three days. Well, that's very true. <laughs> fireworks tonight after the game. You can purchase a light-up product at the Seawolves team store to watch those fireworks from the field. Awesome experience. Make sure you take advantage of it. On Saturday night, camouflage cap giveaway. It's a trucker cap. Pretty awesome giveaway here. It's presented by Velocity Network, and that is for the first 1,000 fans, and it comes your way on Saturday. Sunday at 135, first pitch catch on the field after the game. This has been the William T. Spader Series Update. The William T. Spader Company is giving away a $2,000 grand prize this year, as well as weekly prize giveaways. Weekly drawings include a Seawolf swag bag with four tickets. The grand prize is your choice of $2,000 towards a furnace, hot water tank, air conditioner, or one of Spader's other qualifying services. All weekly participants are automatically entered into the final drawing. Go to wmtspader.com slash Seawolves or click the link in the program, answer a question, and enter to win.